Just an unscheduled life. I, I realize it's late, so everybody that I promised that I would call to let them know that I made it to my destination, consider this the call. <laughs> oh, man. Ain't nothing like being out on the open road. The open road is so dope, you know? It's... It was crazy because I was talking to my companion and on this trip. <laughs> and I was talking about how me and Giovanni, you know, everyone always talked about all the, they always talk about all the terrible things, but they never talk about the amazing things. And I guess it's really because they just don't know them. We we're making our way back from up north, cutting through St. Louis. Even if Jaguar is kidding about leaving the state and making her way back from up north. The, if the authorities get a hold of this video, she'll be in jail because she's not supposed to leave the state. And they're going to go by what the tape says. They're not going to go by, oh, judge, I was just kidding. I was just doing that for a show. Just saying I left the state. They're not going to go by that. They're going to take it for verbatim. Jaguar once again is talking reckless because she knows she's not supposed to leave the state of Texas. So I don't understand why she made this video putting that scenario out there. Does she want to go back to jail? Maybe she does. Man, we're making our way back from up north, cutting through St. Louis, had to stop in Louisiana, come up I-20 back to Dallas and Giovanni loved driving just like I did. Like, oh, you know, I love to drive. Anybody that knows me will tell you I am an impeccable driver. I'm also a stunt driver. A lot of people don't know that about me. I used to race Grand Nationals when I was a kid until I... Is this another story she's making up? Because we never heard of this before. She never spoke about her being a stunt driver and she brags about a lot of things in her life about me i used to race grand nationals when i was a kid until i i mean long and short of it i was doing a buck 35 buck 40 on a curve and there was somebody had an oil spill you know they their pan was leaking and i i could have worked my way out of that but i got ping pong between two different cars and um, it took me into a, a spin and a flip and that car and me tumbled about 18 times. I counted, I just closed my eyes cause I wasn't sure if that was it, you know? And when it finally did, did, did and stopped, I was upside down <laughs> and they drug me out. I had a bump on my head, slight concussion. But I was fine. Little scratch on my hairline. Little breakaway glass. But other than that, I was fine. That's when I stopped racing. I said, if I can live through this, then that's God telling me not to test it. But every chance I get, open road, ain't no cops around. Man. Nothing like it. Giovanni loved driving, too. But anyway, long and short of the story, we was riding side by side on I-20 headed towards Dallas, and we got out of the speed traps. It was just open road for about a good 20 miles. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and next thing I know, he floored in, and I floored it. And as reckless as it was, we did it. We had a whole no hands moment for at least an eighth of a mile. We was doing at least a, a buck thirty. But I looked at him and I saw how free he was. And he looked at me and he recognized that same look in my eyes. And all I could say to myself was, "That's my son." I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to claim him. You know. That weird conversation that I had with SDW about him talking to Giovanni's dad, Donald Boykin. 
he said that Donnie and his whole family said uh, Giovanni wasn't his and nobody in the family knew him. You know, he just he just claimed him for my sake as if I would have ever wanted him to be the father of my child in the first place. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I was 14 and you were 24. You have daughters. I wouldn't want to claim that either. Donnie, you know, people didn't complain that much back in the 90s about older men messing with younger girls. But 30 years later, it don't look so good. You don't want, nobody wants to be called R. Kelly. <laughs> That's statutory R word. But nonetheless, he is your son. He's my son. I knew it the day you showed up at my concert, Donnie. Me and Music Soul Child was on the road. I think, because you were living in Virginia at the time, and you came to my show. And when I got off stage, people kept coming up to me saying that somebody said it was an old friend, wanted to see me. I'm sitting there at the back cage, looking out at the audience. And when I saw him, Donnie, when I saw you, I knew in that if I felt like I had seen a ghost because I saw the other half of my son's face. I ain't gonna lie. It frightened me. I was scared that night, Donnie, because I didn't know what kind of time you was on. You remember I invited you back to my, my dressing room and we talked and you said you wanted to get to know your son and you wanted to be in your son's life. I said, we, we'll figure it out. And my marriage was on its way out. My marriage to Sam. And you were his father. Donnie, I want to tell you something right now. I could burn you down if I wanted to. I could tell everybody all of the terrible things I know about you. All I would have to do is tell the truth and you would look awful. Which is why I spared it. Because it didn't matter what you did in the past. What mattered was that you, you were there for Giovanni all the way to the end. You don't remember that day I called you and I told you I, there's parts of him I can't speak to because they don't come from me. They only come from you. And some of the shit that I hear come out of his mouth sounds just like the bullshit I used to hear come out of your mouth when I was a girl. Like, like you need to talk to his son. Oh, I was so glad when I finally found out. You know, Giovanni kept the secret from me because he was disappointed at the other two times you had showed up before we moved to Texas. Because let's just be honest, Donnie. You came back into our son's life when he was 12 years old. And you left and then you came back again. At least he knew his father. A lot of kids don't get to know their fathers when they're out of the picture like that. At least he knew his father. When my father was passing, you were there. And then you were gone again. And then I didn't see you again until I called you to let you know that our son had been taken from us. A lot of people are saying that when Giovanni was on a live, that's when Jaguar became very unhinged. You all believe that? Or was she always this way? Then other people said she was always this way. The only difference was she was on medication when she was younger. Now she's not. She admits to not taking her meds. But I would think any mother who smears ashes of her child over her face and throws it to audiences in a crowd, the death of that child must have affected them in some type of way for them to do all those antics. And then she admits to smoking the ashes. 
So it's kind of crazy. I think the death affected her and it really messed with her mind some more, you know, worse than what it was. I saw your text messages and I was just glad that you were there. Each time you tried to come back into our lives, your main objective was to secure me. And I told you, I was barely on that time when I was 14, 15 years old. I surely wasn't on that time then, you know, and I was really hoping that we could just be friends and be parents to our son. When I think about me buying your plane ticket to fly down to Texas for the funeral, and us <laughs> at the repast dinner at Gloria's and, and Giovanni's godmother took a picture of us and she said, come on, you're the parents. Take a picture together. And it felt so awkward because the only time we ever co-parented in this young man's life who's sitting here on this screen was when he passed. Well, Jaguar cannot blame him for not co-parenting because she herself said that her father paid him $500 to get lost, kick rocks, don't come back no more. That's what she said. That's why he's never mentioned. Nadia said, you look so awkward in the picture. I said, because that man helped me create one of the most important things in my life. and He ain't nothing but a stranger. I guess I would look awkward in a picture. All of that, all of that grace, all of that understanding for you to say that you know your family know about him, how do you find? You must be. When I told you what I was naming Giovanni, you turned around and made Kitten name the baby that you had with her. Armani, so their names would match. <laughs> How weird was that? You had two women pregnant at the same time, me and Kitten. Armani's mother. I'm Giovanni's mother. And we were never friends. You know, me and me and Kitten passed each other at the house. Where was that? That was Warnock. Up by 11th Street. Me, you, True, Dre. If I wanted to be a real asshole, all I'd have to do is tell him how you were so desperate not to work and to be famous and to be a you know a famous choreographer. You hated jobs. You would quit jobs because you had to wait two weeks to get a paycheck and you wanted the paycheck so you could go to the club, you know. So instead you would go down to the blood bank, you and Dre. And you would hustle off pints of your own blood just so y'all could get enough money. Get some wraps. Buy a couple nicks. Get some beers. Some poor man meal from the Chinese food store over there, 11th and Loud. And get high. I'll never forget that day when you bought that dirt ass weed and me and True was looking at you and you was talking about, yo, this shit is so good. This shit got me so high. And me and True look at you, Donnie, at the same time and said, nigga, you high because you ain't got no blood. <laughs> of course you high as shit. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that was a good fix for the for the issue. There's so many stories I could tell about you like that, Donnie. Nobody knew my son. You you, you was claiming him as a favor. You were lucky. That this young man on this screen was your son. He's the best child you got. Still. That's mostly because it came from me. So understand this, Don, Donnie. Donnie. Donald Boykins. You don't ever have to worry ever again about claiming that young man. 
you weren't necessary when he needed you. I'm glad you were there at the end, but you're not necessary now either. I did the best I could. But like I said, you were a stranger to me. I'm just glad you weren't a stranger to our son when he passed away. Like, share, and subscribe. It's all good. I ain't tripping. I'm going to put this up on the screen. My father, Norman Lindsay Wright Sr., was also an essay victim when he was a child. Well, that was a bombshell, talking about generational curses. He was R-worded by a white man in town back in Florida. My father never talked about it. He hated it. Which is why he always fought so hard for so many other people. And helping them out, I guess that's why I am who I am. My father was a father. He was the father that my son deserved. But my father never touched me in a sexual manner. Not ever. I'm glad Jaguar clarified that because a lot of people were speculating that her son might have been for her daddy. I'm glad she cleared that up. And a lot of people were saying that because she had buried her father's suit in the backyard when she was a child. What could have made her that mad to do that? And so I'm really happy that she cleared that up. He would never do that. Not to anyone. So understand this, Junie Willard. If you ever have the pleasure to meet me in person. I'm going to remember this, what's here on this screen. And guess what? You'll never forget that moment either. I hope you understand me. And now you're banned. I just wanted you to see that. There wasn't a girlfriend in my life that didn't tell me that they was going to get my son. <laughs> that I was going my, my friends would be like I, you gonna be my mother-in-law <laughs> so interesting so golden the lies that people tell because they want to hurt me because I tell the truth it's just funny it's weird <clears throat> listening to people <laughs> make shit up about your life all the time People have been making shit up about me since I was a kid. But at this time in my life, this is the worst it's ever been. And it's some old high school weirdo shit. You know, Michael Braggs called me earlier tonight before I got on the road. Literally right before I got on the road. I had a wonderful conversation on the phone with someone that I care very much for now. And it was like, I know he filled with the devil because it was like he called in that very moment <laughs> just to ruin it, you know. And then, uh. I guess Jaguar is talking to these guys for content also because when she talks to them, she mentions them on her channel that they called her and then she goes into what they talk about. They're doing the same. So these people are using each other for content, although. They don't like each other. So I guess they're frenemies. I found out about Kimmy being doxxed. Ayasha, uh, OG Patrice. Well, this was the most information we've had out of Jaguar concerning Giovanni's father in years. I guess she is venting. And it was very cathartic for her. I guess. I am. Who I say I am, I, I do what I say I do. I, I live up to my word. I, 
You can also go and look up the consequences for lying. When you lie on people, when you tell vicious, awful, hateful lies on people, what you're actually doing is signing your own death warrant. Because God don't abide lies. And if you refuse to repent, then he'll just handle up in the manner that he does. People have grown so accustomed to their own delusions that they actually think they can beat me at this game. I do declare and I do believe I am in love. Uh oh. TJ, you are in history, honey. It didn't take Jaguar long to replace you. You are replaceable don't you ever for a second believe you irreplaceable honey she just replaced you oh lord i know <laughs> <laughs> but it's true i in love with who johnny popcorn in love with who johnny popcorn well, folks, you heard it straight out of the horse's mouth. Jaguar is in love with her Johnny Popcorn. He is popping right now. Hello, Johnny Popcorn. Goodbye, TJ. I guess TJ said you ain't going to use and abuse me like that. Had me going down, putting my lips in the place, and now you replace me with a man. Oh, no. I'm going to file that white warrant in your behind and see how you like that. And since I'm going to file the white warrant, let me just uh, report that you stole my phone for good measure. Something got to put you back in jail. I'm sick and tired of you. In my head, that's how it's playing out. But we're going to see what happens in the next uh, week or so if this white warrant goes into effect. Drop your comments in the comment section, folks. And don't forget to hit the like bell since you're looking at the video. And subscribe also. Okay. Jay. The real, the real Johnny Popcorn. Sis, you fall in love so fast. Oh, you know I do. I think it, that's the beauty of it, though. Falling that, in, you know? But, um, I don't know. Are you in love with love, the essence of love? Or absolutely. Are you absolutely. Absolutely, I'm in love with love, but it's great when the love that I, that I love so much matches my energy. Right, it loves back. Oh. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, she was saying the same thing about TJ. So I guess she does fall in love very easily. You got to be more discerning than that. That's how people get hurt. You got to be very discerning about who you choose to fall in love with. She you know nothing about this man, just met him. The only thing she knows about him is that he served 12 years in prison. And unless she does her research... Everything he tells her is just that, a story, because she would have to research him. Now, is Mr. Johnny Popcorn, is he a free-willed man? He's not a married man. He is single, and he's available. And Well, what I will say is, is this. He and I have similar circumstances, and we have similar goals. He is Uh-oh. That means... <laughs> that's code for he's married oh yeah he's married but is he together with his wife that's another question because she says there's similar circumstances she separated from goomba is the love reciprocated god yes she's not talking physically jaguar i think these ladies are trying to talk her off that ledge you know what i mean because this is too quick this is like a whirlwind. Last week she was in love with TJ. This week, Johnny Popcorn. Huh. God, yes. Yeah, I think it's reciprocated too when you can explain yourself in a situation and both of you know exactly, like you said, the goal and don't put any limitations on anyone or control over anyone. That's when yeah. the love is like, you know, when it blossoms. That's why I'm single because... No, 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 no. We don't want to hear about your single story, all right? And all your war stories you got while you were dating. Stay focused. This is Jaguar. This is about Jaguar, okay? Stay focused, Kimmy, or whoever is talking. 
Are you in love or are you in lust? If you had have asked me that question three weeks ago, I would have told you there was an 80% chance it was lust. <laughs> well, what's the difference now in three weeks ago and now? Well, let me break it down. First things first, I have to acknowledge that the universe, God, all of it, threw this man into my life at a very, very, very interesting time. I don't think I really told you how we met. No, not at all. I don't know how. It was, the day, that, it was the day that me and Beloved parted ways. That whole terrible thing, her trying to stage a fight, threatening to beat me up, stealing my passport, taking my phone, the exchange that Kimmy had to negotiate so I could get my phone and I gave her her phone. And there was the other phone that had all that terrible evidence of her working with the robot um, in it, which is why I'm sure she so desperately wants it back. But um, so anyway... I packed up all, she was on the phone, Beloved was on the phone with Kimmy, and she had left, like she often would do, run away when she ran up against the wall or whatever, and the truth was ready to hit, you know, and um, I found, I tossed every, I tossed all her stuff, and that's when I found my passport, she came back, we had words, she left again, still had my phone. Mad that I found the passport. And while Kimmy had her busy on the phone trying to set up the negotiation for the trade-offs, we could part ways. Um, I packed up all my stuff, cleaned up fast, and I, I made it down to the lobby of the building. Oh, Kimmy was the negotiator, huh? <laughs> yeah, she was the negotiator. And, um, I was trying to not run into Beloved before Kimmy had the agreement set. And so I was in the lobby. I had my things by the door so I could get into a car quick once I could finally get one because I couldn't even call a lift because she had my phone and I and the lift was on. Well, how did she get Jaguar's phone? That was never mentioned before. Jaguar never said... TJ had her phone. She always said she had her wallet and passport. Where did this phone come? This story about this phone is coming out of all of a sudden. It tells me that she's just making it up. This is a story. This is just a story. Because I couldn't even call a lift because she had my phone and I and the lift was on my phone. And I'm like, yeah. you see where this doesn't make any sense, folks. She has never said TJ had her phone. TJ never said she had Jaguar's phone. But all of a sudden, for the purpose of telling this story and for it to sound salacious, she had her phone. She had my phone, and, I, and the lip was on my phone. And I'm like, how am I going to get away from this crazy bitch? And Kimmy said, I'm working it out, I'm working it out, I'm working it out. And so while Beloved was running around the complex looking for me, I was hiding under a table. In the little lounge area in the lobby. Lord Jesus. Well, no, because I was afraid if she bumped into me before we had the agreement set that she was going to force us into a domestic situation. And I'm not trying to have to go back to jail because somebody don't know how to control their emotions. So I hid under the table. And I know, off the man, but I can just imagine you up on the table. I'm, just, hey, wait a minute. So I'm on the phone with Kimmy talking to Kimmy. And I'm like, Kimmy, is the bitch going to give me my shit today? Lord, worst. Hey, right, so me and Kimmy talking. And here comes Johnny Popcorn, walks right in. And he looked under the table. He said, ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> I'm laughing, but this shit ain't funny. <laughs> Wait a minute. So he, he said, are you okay, ma'am? And I said, I think in about 45 minutes, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> and uh, he helped me up from under the table. And the second that I looked at him, I felt like I knew him. The 
immediately like and the way he looked at me it was I was getting ready to say, did y'all eyes meet? Yes, yes. And he said, I know who you are. Uh, and I said, who do you think I am? He said, you're Jaguar, right? Uh, Sounds to me like if someone read too many novels, romantic novels, that's the picture Jaguar painted in her mind. How this first meeting should have went. That's what I'm thinking. What do you all think? Drop it in the comment section. The story is very colorful. I don't know if it's true or if it's not true, but I do know it's very colorful. He said, I follow you. He said, I follow you. He said, I've been following your whole story. I know everything that's going on with you. And he said, I want to tell you something. And I said, what? He said, you will prevail. You're going to win. You're going to beat this whole thing. He said, I know that. He said, I root for you. I pray for you. Every like, I'm like, what? That's God said. And next thing you know, he started talking to me about the importance of <laughs> us as African Americans in this place, in this country where we were never really meant to be and the importance of us sharing with the younger generations who we are who we come from he started talking about the african pharaohs and the queens and next thing i know we're having this like amazing conversation i totally forgot i was hiding and then Kimmy called and she said, she's ready to make the exchange. And I'm like, all right. And I looked at him and I was like, I got to go handle this. And he had already seen her roaming around the property. And he said, is that who you're trying to get away from? And I said, yeah. He said, I, I, I'm not trying to fight a bitch. <laughs> he said, but I'm not going to let her do anything to you. He said, I'll be right back. And he ran out to his, his vehicle and he grabbed his, the cash that he had on him and he, he brought it back to me and he gave it to me. He said, when you're ready to go, I'll call you a car to anywhere you're going. Just let me know when you're ready. And uh, and he said, you make sure you call me and he I had my pen and paper in my little bag and I pulled it out and he wrote his number down and he said, you call me and let me know that you made it where you made it safe. He said, and I'm going to come and check on you tonight. And he did. Funny thing is, Beloved walked past him a few times. She didn't even know it was him. Meanwhile, she ran around telling everybody the day they tried to pop corn and she couldn't be more wrong. She was that day. Exactly. So, <laughs> okay. So, on that note, guys, drop your comments in the comment section. I'm over and out. Don't forget to hit the like bell, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as yet. Thank you for watching.